Hello, and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, before I start, I'd just like to say thank you for all the comments you put on my videos. I enjoy reading them, and I like to answer them as soon as possible. But as the channel gets bigger, it's taking a bit longer to answer all the questions you put on there. If you've got something that needs sorting out immediately, put it on bimmerforums.co.uk or .com, and you'll get an answer a lot quicker. And I'm on all those forums anyway. And of course you get more people's expertise rather than just mine. Anyway, today's Tim's BMW Repairs and Information is all about jump leads. Yeah, where's the best place to connect a jump lead if you want to start the car or you want to use this car, the E31, to start another one? Would it be battery terminal just there? Battery positive, battery negative there? or in the trunk or boot, one of the two big batteries which live there. And on the ED32, the battery that lives under the rear seat. And the E38, the battery that lives in the trunk as well. Don't forget on some models, 750 with E-Cats, you've got two batteries in it. Yet, yeah, which of these places is best and safest uh, to connect to? Well, from my long experience of over 30 years of BMWs, the best place to put these jump leads is as far away from your BMW as possible. Yep, the old BMWs do not like being jump-started one little bit, nor do they like jump-starting other vehicles. And I've seen so many cars that have been damaged and one even to a point where we couldn't even fix it after about six months of trying to get it going again. Yet the old electronics really don't like it. Now, when you get to the E64, they're pretty much more immune to high voltages than the old BMWs. But even with that car, I wouldn't jump start it, nor would I use it to jump start another car. And it's such a tempting thing to do, isn't it? You've got, a, say, a little car like the Mini, it's got a flat battery. You need to go somewhere. Well, I'll jump start it from the E31. It won't do any damage. Well, I'm afraid it does. Doesn't do it all the time, about one in 10 times and things go horribly wrong. And what it's all to do with is inductance. Yep, and it's the same method as used as providing high tension voltages at spark plugs, as is the problem when trying to jump start the car. Now with a coil used in, say, the M70 engine, you put power into it, and then you release that power it generates a voltage in the primary, which then induces a voltage in the secondary of about 20,000 volts. Now, it might seem strange that when you look at the primary, which you're only sticking 12 volts nominally into the primary, that when you release the power from the primary, the voltage goes up over 200 volts. And then that's um, multiplied by the turns ratio in a coil to produce your 20,000 volts. So what's happening that when you disconnect power from a coil, such as the ignition coil, you get 200 volts from the primary. There's no multiplication, a multiplication of voltage in a coil. So what's going on? Well, it's to do with inductance. And that if you put power into any coil of wire which has a magnetic core, when you release that power, then the voltage increases to a point because it's trying to attain the same current that was put into it. And so that's why the primary winding of an ignition coil reaches 200 volts, current into it, release the current, and the voltage increases to about 200 volts to try and attain the same current. That current actually goes through the condenser or the capacitor in the points in the distributor of a points ignition car and then multiplies to get your HT voltage. Well, the same thing happens when you're connecting to jumps, uh, jump leads on, on the car. So if you imagine connecting a pair of jump leads on a car, we get all these sparks going on. Some of it is metal burning away on the jump lead uh, claws. Some of it is actually a high voltage jumping across those, the points between the connection and the jump leads. To produce a spark, you need quite a high voltage in the hundreds of volts. And unfortunately, that what is what occurs with a car when you connect jump leads to it. It's an inductive load. There are some parts of the wiring which, have been, it, which are inductive, 
and the electronic modules have inductors in them as well in their front end power supplies. So connecting and disconnecting a pair of jump leads puts a huge amount of voltage through the system. Now even with the ignition off and the key not in the ignition of an E31, the act of lifting up the bonnet or lifting up the boot, the trunk, turns the electronics on. So we've got the general module running, we've got the body control module running, we've got the alarm system, we've got all sorts of things. Of course the DME has also got a hot at all times supply to it. So they're all connected. Disconnect your jump leads, a couple of hundred volts induced in the electronics, pop goes the electronics. And it really is heartbreaking. Breaking. And I've been involved with so many cars that have had this problem. I just jump started another car and now X and Y don't work. And in worst case, the engine just doesn't run altogether. We do have general module failures. The alarm systems one, the siren goes off and you can't get it to turn off unless you remove the module altogether. And problems like that, yeah, it really is heartbreaking. And some of them are so difficult to solve again. Some modules you can just replace uh, without worrying about coding, but a lot of the modules on the E31, E32 and E38 are coded to the car. So it isn't just a case of going to the scrappy and getting a new one and sticking it in and hoping it works. It probably won't work because it needs coding. So, yeah, and of course the modules are in places which are nigh impossible to get to. On the E31, you've got them in the footwell, underneath the glove compartment, hidden in the trunk, all sorts of places difficult to get to. At least the DME and EGS are reasonably easy to get to. But they, of course, aren't just simply replaced. Well, the EGS is on an E31 and E32. But replacing modules is just such a long-winded thing. And when you think about it, let's face it, if you've got a little car that's got a flat battery, it's 50 or 60 quid for a new battery and I'd much rather pay that, stick it in, do the job properly, or at the very least, charge it with a decent charger, and then at least you've got a chance of getting some energy into that battery, so it will start the car. E31, of course, you've got two batteries. They're 70 quid each, so it's not going to break the bank. If your batteries have gone flat on an E31, spend 140 quid and replace them. Don't even think about putting jump leads on one of these cars. It just isn't worth it. You may get away with it, and many times people have got away with jump starting a car, but on the tenth time, something will go pop. And it really is heartbreaking breaking for a car of this age to start rooting around, trying to get modules in and out of them, and finding the right modules, yeah, especially the E31, which is quite a rare car these days. So, yeah, that is my, the best advice I can give you. Throw away your jump leads. Just keep them away from these old BMWs. It's not going to end nicely. I'll tell you that for nothing. Anyway, sorry to leave on a bit of a low note, but there you go. It's best to know. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you next time.